Hi, this is Dr. Subhatra. In today's session, I'll be teaching about the requirements of permanent way, selection of gauges and coning of wheels. This is the, in the previous class, uh, I taught about the component parts of the permanent way. This is the picture of the permanent way. Uh, in this, uh, the two rails are in combination. It is fitted to the uh, wooden sleeper here and the sleeper is uh, fixed to the rails by means of fixtures and fastenings. Uh, these uh, fixtures, fastenings, sleepers and rails are resting on ballast and this ballast this, this is the coarse aggregate particle. This is called as a ballast and it is lying on the subgrade. All these together is called as a railway track or the permanent way. What are the requirements of, of an ideal permanent way? Or in other words, we can tell that a permanent way is uh, should be good. Means what are all the points it should satisfy? That is, it should maintain the gauge in a correct and uniform distance. Gauge is the uh, inner to inner distance between the two rails. The top of the rail should be at the same level uh, in a straight track. On the curves, proper super elevation should be provided. All the component parts in the permanent way should be accurately designed. Only then it will be able to transfer the load from the uh, train to the rail and from the rail to the um, sleeper and sleeper to the ballast and ballast to the subgrade. The track should have a good lateral strength to withstand the stability. Uh, it should have certain amount of elasticity and the tractive resistance should also be minimum. All the points, crossings, joints should be properly designed. It should have a, a proper drainage system so that the water should not be stagnant on the track. It should be cost effective at both at the time of construction and uh, during the maintenance also. When it has all these, when it satisfies all these criteria, then that uh, railway track or a permanent way is said to be ideal. This is a structure of the track. You see here, this G is the gauge. This is the inner distance between the two uh, rails. Okay, this rail is uh, fixed over the sleeper. Then the sleeper is resting on the ballast. Ballast is then on the formation and below is the natural subgrade. Okay, the slope uh, given to the ballast is 1.5 is to 1 and the slope given for the formation is 2.2 .2 is to 1. Okay, then uh, let us see gauges in detail. Gauge is the distance between the inner side of two parallel rails. Okay, the gauge length if it is large, we'll call it as a broad gauge. If it is in the medium, we'll call it as a meter gauge. And if it is a very smaller one, we'll call it as a narrow gauge. When two different gauges meet at the point, we'll call it as a break of gauge. There are three types of gauges. One is broad gauge, second one is meter gauge and narrow gauge. This is a constant value throughout the um, world. Okay, broad gauge, the distance between the two parallel rails. If it is 1676 mm, we'll call that gauge as a broad gauge. Meter gauge is 1 meter. You can remember that way, it is 1 meter. When it is 1000 mm, we'll call it as a meter gauge. For a narrow gauge, the distance between the two rails, center distance between the two rails will be 762 mm and 610 mm respectively. Okay, this is what is given here. Uh, in India, majority of the gauges are broad gauge and uh, in Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Brazil and Argentina, they are using the broad gauge. Okay, then coming to meter gauge, then the distance is around 1 meter or 1000 mm, we'll call it as a meter gauge. Okay, me, where this meter gauge is suitable? When there is no inadequate funds and the only traffic is moderate. 
okay we can go for this meter gauge uh, mostly in underdeveloped countries and in interior areas will be going for meter gauge and also the revenue from that is not much more expected we can go for meter gauge then coming to narrow gauge the distance is 762 mm or 610 mm only a uh, very few countries will have this narrow gauge narrow gauge is low is used for slow speed movement for sharp curves steep gradients and narrow bridges hilly regions and in uh, thinly populated areas we'll go for narrow gauge here the revenue is not uh, uh, much more and it is very low also okay then coming to the next topic coning of wheels this is the wheel of the train see here the wheel is given some slope the slope is 1 and 20 degree this cone this is called as coning of wheel the wheel is uh, provided at the bottom of the train or bottom of each compartment okay so this is the flange portion and this is the thread portion according to the slope of the wheel the rails will also be tilted in the same slope because in order to withstand that wheel sloping is also given in the rails why this coning of wheel is provided the coning slope is 1 in 20 with respect to the vertical axis it is mainly done to maintain the vehicle at a center position with respect to the track okay it also there are many advantages it also reduces the wear and tear and it provides a possibility of lateral movements and it uh, it also prevents the slipping of wheels so this is the main purpose of providing uh, coning of the wheels Thank you so much.